The thing is, if yeah, you know, another cycle, you know, you can be very right, and it's a whole different ball game for you then. Um, but I think even even yourself, when Bitcoin started at about fifteen, sixteen thousand, it must have been like fuck. We were here, now we're here. Yeah, writing it from sixty six thousand to fifteen thousand is is a little painful, especially levered. Especially with the Silvergate loan. Yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> with, uh, we're on the same ride here. There's just a lot more zeros on that. But like, but I'm really curious about that Silvergate loan because um, can you explain like how that deal was structured when it took place and how you actually ended up sort of closing it? Because I don't understand how that worked with them having to basically close down the bank. Yeah, well, we, we went, entered into the loan before Terra Luna melted down. Mm -hmm. So... So if you recall what the state of Bitcoin was in the crypto economy before Terra Luna, before Three Arrows, before every single bankruptcy. Life was good. I <laughs> mean, generally, you know, it was a we halfway to the moon. Yeah. And everybody was everybody was in massive investment mode. And I guess crypto VC was all time high and Signature and Silvergate had massive expansion plans, et cetera. And, you know, and I I had like 10 companies offering me loans against Bitcoin. And we had, you know, quite a lot. I don't know. I guess, I guess we had something like $4 billion of uncollateralized, uh, of just free collateral. So $4 billion of assets. So at that point, we were borrowing $200 million with $4 billion. So it's like a loan to value 5%. Yeah. So, so it's, it seemed fairly reasonable at that time. I think Bitcoin was in the mid 40s or in that range, 45, 50. Yeah. And then, um, and then what just happened was a succession of meltdowns, right? Mm -hmm. I, and, you know, and, and they started with Terra Luna and then it was like massive deleveraging. And it turned out that everybody was basically cross trading with everybody, right? I mean, Alameda and Three Arrows and Genesis and FTX and the entire thing just started to collapse. But it didn't come all at once, right? It came in about five succession yeah. plateaus. So, so five brutal beatdowns. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. And when we got to um, when we got to New Year's Eve of this year, right? That's you know fees on the base chain were sometime one, two VSAT. Yeah. You know they were like there were there were blocks with three hundred dollar transaction fees in the entire block, right? And um, I think Bitcoin was like 16,500 around New Year's Eve. So at that point, um, all, all of the wildcat crypto banks had all been wiped out, right? But they, you know, they were just all playing fast and loose, right? T taking hundreds of millions of dollars of your you know, depositors money and then loaning it to another hedge fund that would then put it into, you know, anchor protocol with UST or something. And like they were, there were like seven layers of risk rehypothecation there. And so they got wiped out, but, uh, you know, Signature and Silvergate were still around and, and we didn't really have the banking crisis outside the, you know, the crypto ecosystem, you know, but so, and by the way, that, that entire thing, right, that was catalyzed by the Fed, right? The Fed mm. took interest rates from zero basis points to 500 basis points in 12 months. So that's the steepest incline in the risk-free overnight rate that we've seen in our lifetimes. So they kind of crushed a bunch of stuff. And the first, the crypto ecosystem smashed first. With, uh, with Silvergate, what happened really was, just like with all the other fractional reserve banks, they're sitting on long dated treasuries or long dated or mid dated fixed income instruments. And anything that you bought, any bond, fixed income bond you bought with a duration of seven to 30 years when short term rates were zero, all of those things are yielding one and a half to two and a half, three percent interest. So, so they looked better than nothing, but when overnight rates are 500 basis points risk-free and you're sitting stuck with credit risk and you're stuck with interest rate risk for 10, 15 years, they all trade down. I think the, the entire bond portfolio, the bond index, B-O-N-D, traded down 18% from August of 2020 uh, to like last week. 
So all the bonds traded down. And so if you look at the, the bonds for the banks, they're all trading down 10, 15 percent. So they're all technically insolvent because if you're a fractional reserve with a 10 to 1 ratio mm-hmm. and your bonds trade down 10 percent, right? You you've wiped you've wiped out everything. So that that's that's an oops courtesy of central banking regulators, right? Like what, you know, how how is that not gonna happen? Um so Silvergate, I think, you know, suffered from two, two unfortunate incidences or two situations. One, they had a lot of money invested in in mid-dated uh, fixed income instruments that traded down. That's the first. But that didn't kill them. I think what killed them is is their credit line uh, with, with, uh, with the Federal Home Loan Association was was not renewed. <laughs> so so they got a margin call from the government and I I think you know the the crypto friendly banks have not been treated as generously <laughs> as other diversified plain vanilla banks, right? So we saw with signature the, a, a similar situation. So Having said all that, I think Silvergate was really well-run bank, is a well-run yeah. bank. And the fact that they didn't actually default, they didn't go insolvent, they weren't put in a receivership, and they didn't, uh, they didn't lose their depositors' money, right? And so every, you know, all these other banks, they all actually had to be bailed out. Silvergate didn't get a bailout. The problem with Silvergate is they just didn't have the capital, so they had to wind down the business. I like Alan as well. I think Alan's a great guy. Alan stand up. Yeah. He's he's done an extraordinary job. Yeah. Like he he's actually I I think if you're looking for a role model like for how to be a banker, he he is a role model. Have you met him? Ironically. Yeah, he's great. I really yeah. like him. Yeah. I've been down to there in San Diego a couple of times. Just top guy. Yeah, so I I feel badly about that. But they needed to basically sell off all their assets and they needed to do it in a hurry. So we had a three year loan. So our loan was not due until until I guess March of 2025. So we would prefer not to pay it off. Obviously we would like to keep it because I expect that Bitcoin will be trading at yeah. double or triple by then. So from our point of view, paying it off early wasn't ideal. Like that's why it was a three year loan, but you know, the, the business decision, I mean, they were selling, Silvergate was selling their assets at a discount, like basically liquidating them uh, before they're due and taking a, a haircut to do it. So in this case, the business decision was, do we hold out? And that might very well contribute to Silvergate being in receivership and not being able to wind down their business. So that's not really good for them. Right? Mm-hmm. We could be recalcitrant, but then who's going to take over the bank? And then what's that situation going to be? Or do we try to pay it off early? And uh, so, I mean, the accommodation was we paid it off early. Not ideal for us, but we got a 22% discount against the, the fixed loan. And the loan was, you know, the world turned upside down. The loan was so for plus 370 basis points or something. So that was a 3.75% loan a year ago. But then SOFR went to 500 basis points. So it went from being a 3% loan to being an 8.5% right. interest rate in 12 months. So, huh. so the rest of our debt is 1.5% interest. So this became the most expensive piece of debt we had, and it was actually one-third of our interest payments a year. We're, you know, we've... We've got a really nice situation, like one and a half percent interest on two point two billion dollars of debt. We're paying thirty million dollars a year of interest on everything else, but we were looking at paying fifteen million dollars or sixteen million dollars a year of interest just on this one stub. So, from our point of view, we thought it's expensive debt. It's floating. Who knows where Sofer's going? It's it was it's also it didn't start out being a problem, but it was it was the least popular piece of debt we had. You remember the entire yeah. micro strategy <laughs> liquidation, yeah. you know, Twitter party where everyone was just gleefully, you know, having a liquidation. They're hoping that was it three K the number? Well, first they were like, we think they'll get liquidated twenty thousand. 
Like, no, it's like less. <laughs> and eventually, eventually I had to put out a tweet saying, look, I mean, when Bitcoin goes to 3,500, we've still got the Bitcoin. And yeah. if it goes below that, we'll figure out something else, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, the Twitter people were just very unhappy that we weren't getting liquidated. At least the, the trolls. <laughs> yeah. The Twitter trolls. Yeah. They're very well, they unhappy. all got liquidated, so they weren't used yeah. to liquidated. <laughs> yeah, Is right. this not fair? They're like, the bull run can't start till Sailor gets liquidated. Yeah. So... It was. It turned out having that debt that was marked that was against collateral marked to market was politically, you know, a, a public relations liability for us. Right. And and uh, it was just one. If you're a public company, you know, it's just one complication we didn't need. Yep. So for us to basically pay off the loan, we kind of got a triple benefit. We, we got rid of a, a third of our interest payments a year and we blew away an obscenely expensive loan. We, you know, if, you, if you calculate the IRR on that, if you're basically buying out the loan at a 22% discount, you, you know, you're avoiding $50 million of principal payments and you're avoiding another $35 million of interest payments. So you're avoiding $85 million on $200 million. So, you, you know, it's, it's like a 30 percent IRR or so, something. It's a good trade. Yeah. So it's 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 a no brainer yeah. that you would want to do that if you had that option. Uh, so it was uh we took out expensive debt. We kind of simplified the balance sheet. We we uh freed up we, we had a I mean nearly a billion dollars of Bitcoin posted as collateral I guess do at one point so, so you're freeing up a billion dollars of collateral pay, you know paying off a loan getting rid of the interest and now you're simplifying the capital structure and now the the next piece of debt coming due is December of 2025 and it's got it, it's convertible to equity okay at like in a 390 strike or something like that so so uh, a much less, uh, let's say sometimes in public companies, you don't want your trolls to be able to generate or spin a negative hypothetical. Yeah. Right. Like if they you don't want to spook people, yeah, the short sellers, yeah. if they can come up with a scenario under rich, uh, under which things get scary, then they are incentivized to market that scenario. So by taking, uh, by paying this loan off, it was, it was a benefit to Silvergate because they're basically unwinding, you know, winding down the company, right? So they have to get the loan off their books. And it's a benefit to us because we clean up our balance sheet and it was economically, uh, you know, economically a, a, a win for the shareholders.